Hi, this is Meg Chadzi, Washington Sea Grant's Ocean Acidification Specialist and Liaison to NOAA's Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory in Seattle. In addition to supporting marine research, Washington Sea Grant also conducts outreach and education around important marine issues like ocean acidification, or OA. And as their OA specialist, I'm often called upon to speak about the causes, chemistry, and impacts of OA. Whether I'm working with students or presenting to community groups, I've found that demonstrations and hands-on activities really help me get some of my key points about OA across. The four that I'm sharing here on Washington Sea Grant's OA YouTube channel are some of my favorites because they're simple and they don't require any toxic or hard to source materials. Everything you need can pretty much be purchased for a few dollars at your local grocery store. And I hope that educators, science communicators, and others will use them for their own classes and presentations. Now to get the most out of these videos, I encourage you to download the companion protocols for each demonstration. These are PDF files that you can access from our Ocean Acidification webpage. Look for a link to our Washington Sea Grants OA resources on the right toolbar of this page. In addition to instructions for how to perform each demo, these protocols include the scientific context and rationale for each demo so that you can craft your demonstration narrative in your own words. But wait, there's more. When performing these demos, it's really helpful to provide your audience with a little background information about the causes and chemistry of OA, including a short primer on pH, which is the term used to describe acidity. So in addition to the short demonstration videos, I recorded a 20 minute presentation, sort of an OA 101, that I encourage you to watch and also share with your audiences. You can view this presentation here on Washington Sea Grant's OA YouTube channel, and you can also download the PowerPoint slide deck from our OA webpage. You'll find it with the demonstration protocols. Regardless of whether you think you'll use these slides, I encourage you to take a look because the slide notes include additional information and links that will help you field questions about the demos when you're performing them. And if you do use these slides, my only request is that you preserve the acknowledgements, photo credits, and Sea Grant URL on each slide. If you need to alter the content, please email me a copy of your version so I can keep track of how my materials are being adapted. My contact info is provided in the notes section of the last slide in this PowerPoint slide deck. Thanks and enjoy. This is a slide. Uh, you should all be looking at a wide open view of the vast expanse of the ocean. And I, I frequently start my presentations with this slide because I, I uh, think that this is the way a lot of people view the ocean. Um, when you ask them to describe it, they'll say things like big and vast and deep and endless. And I find that this can often be a barrier to effective communication about ocean acidification because um, it's really hard for anyone to believe that, that human activity on land can truly uh, you know, affect the chemistry of such an enormous body of water. So um, I start with this slide because I think everyone can relate to it. And then I move to the next slide which is a graphic representation of all the water on our planet, including that that's present in the atmosphere as clouds and, and vapor. So this is all the salt and fresh water and vapor and ice combined on our planet. And I, when I first saw this slide, um, another scientist was using it in her, in her presentation, I was absolutely shocked. I had no idea. And what I asked my audience to do is imagine spreading that drop of water, which for the record is 980 miles in diameter. I looked it up. So it's a pretty big drop of water. It would stretch from, let me see, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah to Topeka, Kansas. But um, it's still not that big compared with the rest, with the surface area of the planet. So I use this slide to make a point with my audience that when you imagine smearing that drop of water back out over all the yellow sandy ocean basins um, of the planet, here you only see one hemisphere, what, then you can get a much better sense of what a thin skin of, of water the uh, oceans really are on our planet. And that you also understand better than that there's so much surface area. It's really more about 
two different phases being in contact with each other at the surface of the ocean, the atmosphere, the gas phase, and the water phase of the ocean. So there, it's much easier to understand after looking at this slide how what is humans are putting into the atmosphere through the combustion of fossil fuels and deforestation in terms of carbon dioxide, how much opportunity there is for that gas to exchange, just dissolve right into the ocean. And that's what ocean acidification is about. It's about the change in chemistry that is caused by an increase in the amount of dissolved carbon dioxide in the ocean. Okay, I think I've beat that horse to death. Let's move on to the next slide. So this is about, I, I have two slides about chemistry or about the phenomenon and then the next slide is about um, pH scale. And I try not to hit my audiences over the head with too much chemistry. I don't really think it's necessary in most cases, but I do think there's some very important key points. So I'm going to try to make those for you now as uh, efficiently as possible. So the first thing I want people to understand is what is ocean acidification? And what does it have to do with global warming? People also often uh, know there's a link, but they're not very clear on it. So um, first of all, I say in this slide, we have a, a industrial facility of some kind, and it's emitting something into the atmosphere. For the sake of our uh, discussion here, we're going to say it's carbon dioxide. And so humans' use of fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Most of that carbon dioxide stays in the atmosphere, and it is the driver of climate change. I don't spend any more time on it than that because that's not what the talk is about, and it's also not up for argument, in my opinion. So uh, what we really want to get to in this um, presentation is the fact that about a quarter of the carbon dioxide that humans emit into the atmosphere doesn't stay there. It dissolves into the ocean by dissolving across the surface of the ocean into in, into the water column. So um, when it gets there, it causes ocean acidification. What is ocean acidification chemically? It's really very, very simple. Um, thank goodness, you know, if it were complicated, it would be a lot harder to uh, communicate about it. But in a nutshell, it is the reaction of water molecules in seawater with a molecule of carbon dioxide to form a molecule of carbonic acid. That is, that is one of the main take-home messages of any talk about ocean acidification, that we're there because of human activity and the combustion of fossil fuels and increased amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the, the seawater, we now are increasing the level of carbonic acid, and that is what is making the oceans more acidic. Okay, next slide. So the pH scale. Again, I'm going to provide anyone who needs this uh, animated PowerPoint copy of this slide, and I encourage you to use it. Um, I also encourage everyone uh, at this point to just take a, a screenshot of this slide so that when we leave the slide deck and go to the live presentations, if you want to pull it up and refer to it when I'm talking about pH, you can. So, um, so the pH scale, there are three things that I always try to uh, cover in this, um, on this slide. The first is, um, really, what is it? It seems kind of arbitrary. You've got this funny scale that goes from 1 to 14. Why those numbers? What does it stand for? Um, what is the difference between acidity and um, acid and base? So let's cover that right now. pH uh, is the scale that we use to measure the acidity of a solution. And more specifically, what pH is actually describing, that what the number is describing, the pH value, is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions in that solution. Now I say that so that you'll know, but I don't, I don't, I tell people not to get hung up on that because when they hear negative log, they start to get a little panicked. Um, the math aficionados in the audience will instantly understand that when you take the negative log of a very small number, a number less than one, it becomes a positive number, a positive whole number. So that is why, uh, that's really why the scale runs from zero to 14. Um, the negative, 14 is the negative log of 0 
13 zeros one. Um, so it's a very small number. That's the concentration of hydrogen ions in sodium hydroxide, which is not very acidic. Um, the concentration of hydrogen ions in, for example, battery acid, which is close to zero on this scale, is much, much higher. And consequently, the negative log of that concentration is um, counterintuitively a smaller number, very close to, you know, between zero and one. But that's all the time I really spend on that. The important thing is that um, uh, people, just by convention, uh, we've sort of divided this pH scale into two halves. We have the acidic side of the scale, which is everything below pH 7, and that's the top half of the scale in this slide. And then we have what is commonly called the basic half of the scale, everything above pH 7, the bottom half. And you will recognize these common um, solutions, these common liquids on the side, and it'll probably make sense to you. We know lemon juice is acidic. We know bleach is basic. And this slide is useful for that reason because your audience will be able to uh, relate to what these um, solutions are like. Okay, so why hydrogen ions? Why do we care? Because hydrogen ions are essentially what give an acid its kick. The more hydrogen ions, the more acidic it is. And it's what makes something corrosive. Uh, when we use that term, when we're talking about ocean acidification, uh, we're talking about the, the tendency of hydrogen ions in solution to make uh, that liquid more corrosive. Okay. Um, what's really important, forget all the negative log, forget everything. If what you really want your audience to take home is that there's an inverse relationship between the pH value and the acidity. In other words, the lower the pH value, the higher the acidity. You see that here. Battery acid has a very low pH value between 0 and 1. Um, bleach, which is not very acidic, it's considered basic, which is the opposite of acidic, um, has a very high pH value. So as pH declines, acidity goes up. That is really what you need to know. And um, if anyone feels like remaking this slide, I would love to see the rainbow scale inverted so that the basic end is on the top and the acid end is upside is on the bottom. It would make it so much easier to talk about pH declining and actually be moving down the screen. But again, I've never had time to do that, but I, I hope someone will and send it to me. All right. Um, again, take a screenshot if you haven't already. And then my final final point, no, perhaps this is my second point. Second point about the pH scale uh, that you want to make is this is a log scale. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean much to most audiences, but when you remind them that the Richter scale that we use to measure the strength of earthquakes and the decibel scale that we use to find out if your speakers are turned up too high um, is are also log scales. And people really understand that an earthquake that is 7.0 on the Richter scale, for example, is much, much worse than an earthquake that's 6.0. Same with pH. The, um, something that's pH um, 7 is 10 times as acidic as something that's pH 8. And again, something that is the pH 6 is 10 times as acidic as pH 7. So every time you make a whole number change on the pH scale, it's actually a tenfold change in terms of the increase or decrease in acidity. So that's why I make that point because we're going to talk about how seawater pH has changed since humans started using fossil fuels. And seawater pH has only so far changed by 0 0.1 pH units. It's listed here on the scale as 8.1. That asterisk means that that's only been, that's modern pH. Before the Industrial Revolution, about the mid-19th century, when we weren't burning huge amounts of fossil fuels, seawater pH was actually 8.2. So it's changed by 0.1 pH units. And that does not usually impress too many people. But that is why I make this point about the log scale, because when you unpack that into what it actually means in terms of an increase in acidity, it's much more significant. A 0.1 pH unit change, decrease, I should say, in seawater pH translates to a 30% increase in acidity. 
even 30% doesn't necessarily uh, impress a lot of people, but uh, you can tell them to think of it in terms of temperature. You know, the difference between a normal body temperature and a deadly fever is about 6% in terms of degrees Fahrenheit. Or the difference between a perfect day in Seattle, and we Seattleites are, are lightweights and we like, we like it around 75. It gets hotter than that and we start to feel uncomfortable. A 30% increase in the temperature of a perfect day in Seattle means it's close to 100 degrees out here. So think about how stressful that much of a change can be for living organisms. Okay, the final thing that I want to say about the pH scale, and I think we're a little sensitive to this, uh, those of us who communicate uh, about ocean acidification, is, is a semantics issue. Um, some you will notice that seawater is on the basic half of the scale, it's 8.1, and really seawater will always remain basic. It's buffered by so many dissolved salts and other compounds that it can't, the pH of seawater really can't, other than in a very artificial situation, be shifted a great deal. It can be reduced by the addition of acid, um, but it's never going to become acidic. So nevertheless, it is still correct to talk about things in terms of acidification. That means the act of becoming more acidic from any point on the scale. Here is a little uh, animation to illustrate that. Again, it's the chemical equation that makes um, carbonic acid, and you see that when you make carbonic acid, you shift the pH towards the acidic end of the scale. doesn't matter where you start, pH 11 or pH 5, any direction towards the acidic end is considered acidification. So if someone ever tells you, oh, acidification, it's not real, you don't have to worry about it, the oceans are basic, you can say, uh-uh-uh, it simply reflects a trend towards the acidic end of the scale. Okay. I think I'm really done with this. Um, I'm ready to move on to the demos. So I'm going to do four demos, and my little nicknames for them are, made these up last night, A Tale of Two Acids, Lemon Juice versus Carbon Dioxide. I use this demo to, as much to teach people about what ocean acidification is not, as I do to teach them what it is. And it's a fun, interactive demo that I think really gets the point across. Okay, the next demo I'll do that is a, a perfect segue uh, from the first one, is using breath holding as a way to experience acidification in our own bodies. And this is where I am able to convince people that even a small change in pH uh, can actually have quite a big impact on living organisms. It doesn't have to, that's why ocean acidification, even though you know, it doesn't seem like a, an impressive amount of pH decline, is actually very serious for marine organisms. Third demo, shells on acid. This is the one I referred to earlier. I'm simply putting an oyster shell uh, as a representative of all the marine species that have hard parts or shells made out of calcium carbonate, and there are many species. I'll show you a picture in a minute. Um, I'm using this demo to show why they are so vulnerable to ocean acidification. They are calcifiers, these species with calcium carbonate shells, are um, directly impacted by changing seawater chemistry in a very tangible way. And this demo shows exactly, well, it shows sort of an approximation of what's happening. All right, uh, this, whoops, backwards, forwards. Um, if you have time, I'll hold, keep this up for a minute. Take a screenshot of this. So you can refer to it later if we have time to talk about the various calcifiers. But I believe you've probably heard about impacts on calcifiers in other webinars. So if we don't have time, I won't go there. But these are all species, some are plants, that are um, potentially quite vulnerable to ocean acidification because of the corrosive effect of um, lower pH seawater on calcium carbonate. And finally, the last one, uh, crossing Thresholds, it sounds like a movie. Um, it's a world premiere uh, that I hope will go well today. <laughs> and uh, it really is about what root beer can teach us about ocean acidification. 